Thanks for checking out the Pinfall Wrap Up. I'm your host, Andrew Karachi, alongside Marcus Van Buren. And Marcus, what do we have in store tonight? On tap, we have our review of the uh, 28 fuck it's edition okay. of Monday Night Raw. Uh, we also have Kevin's Corner later on, uh, which is our NXT and other uh, news items corner. Indie wrestling. Indie well. wrestling. Oh, that's what that says. <laughs> Sorry, I can't read the writing. Probably thinking, like, why does he write Indian in there? Is it like the Colts? Like, why are we covering the Colts? Yeah, why the fuck would we want to talk about the goddamn Colts? <laughs> Anyways. You're going to get me hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. And uh, in Kevin's Corner, also, we have other interesting topics of the wrestling world that we'd like to speak about. Which none of you will make it to that point by the time this. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. No one gives a shit. And uh, for the people who haven't found us, you know what? How about this? Where can they find us? We'll just skip to that. Where can people find our podcast if they haven't found it already? Or if they have found it? You know what? I might as well just finish my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> the spiel that makes no sense. Right. So, where can people find our podcast? Or for the people that, you know, just tell me. Just read words. All right. I'll read the... I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. Uh, you can find us at uh, Pinfall Wrap Up on Potomac.com. You can go ahead and listen to it straight from the browser itself. On Androids, you can download the Potomac app and search for Pinfall Wrap Up. We are also on the Apple and iOS devices um, using the I, iTunes uh, what was podcast, podcast app, app yeah. um, and look up Pinfall Wrap Up. We can be reached by email at pinfallwrapup at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Pinfall wrap up, and we are going to be on YouTube soon uh, under the tag of Mad Dog 20, uh, 2001, two D's and two G's. Uh, we will be up there as soon as once we get our uh, editing down. Also, I forgot to put in Marcus's notes. Uh, we're on Twitter as well uh, at Pinfall Wrap Up. Uh, not a whole lot going on on there as much. I just post the episodes to that for now. But if you uh, if you tweet towards it. Uh, I will get back to you, or we cover it on the podcast. The nice thing about starting off with a new podcast is we don't get a lot of uh, emails or comments or anything, really. I mean, literally, we haven't gotten anything. And with that is, we'll 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 cover it right here on this show. We'll even have our own little, like... Uh, dedicated section. Dedicated section. So, you know, you can send a list of 100 questions. I don't care. We'll, we'll just go with it. I mean, clearly no one cares what we have to say because our views would be up. Which brings us to our next segue. Kevin. Actually, it's Justin. But he he plays Kevin on TV. Uh, Justin, our numbers, please. Okay, so we had 27 people visit the podcast. We had 11 plays and 9 downloads. And that is a little skewed, too, because we don't get the numbers from iTunes. Correct. I don't think we get the iTunes. Oh, if we do, it's uh, it's pretty fucking sad, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's really true. <laughs> if, that's, if that's legit numbers, that's I'm pretty fucking sad with that. Uh, so, anyways, back to the, uh, even though we weren't talking about it before, but to the YouTube page, which is Mad Dog 2001 uh, double D-double-G, in case uh, that wasn't mentioned before. It probably was, but anyways, the... It's it's a new thing. Uh, I'm gonna be posting full episodes along with like other like clips similar to what other podcasts do. I think that's a good way to get us out there. Uh, the last video that I posted actually had eight views, which is more almost as many as downloads as we had. So hooray for that! Uh, <laughs> YouTube is Save a little eight people. <laughs> I don't think it is. No. I think it's somebody is just like somebody probably typed in like raw review or something, and they're like, "Oh, cool! Look, this this is Monday Night Raw." Thinking because it's because Raw is a three hour show, they probably clicked on it thinking they can get the whole show. Oh, they're like, yeah. "What is this shit?" This is some fat fucks <laughs> talking into a mic. Right. So, anyways, uh, that's what that's going to be used for. Now, I posted up a, a video this past on, on Christmas actually uh, for the pinfall wrap up and. Immediately got flagged because of our intro, uh, Union Underground theme, the Raw's War theme. Uh, you know, I've been on YouTube for almost 10 years. I've been flagged one time, and it got resolved. Like, it was it was a bullshit uh, flag. It's something to do with my Jerome Bettis video. That was... If you remember that Those one, Those are the Mark. days. Yeah. So, anyways, the, uh, the second time I've ever been flagged, and they flagged me for copyright, 
And I was like, this, this sucks because... I literally had one view. I looked at it, and I'm like, wow, dude, it must be picking up steam by getting copyright infringement laws, which is kind of what I'm going for because, like, I don't think YouTube really cares about copyright if you have one view because you're not, you're not, it, I think it, it makes them spend more time, like, looking for the things than it is to, because we don't draw enough viewership. I only have, I think, 67 subscribers. And I bet you probably 20 of those are dead accounts, including one of your dead accounts. And when you have a dead account, it doesn't take away from your subscriber rating, which right. is awesome, by the way. Uh, clearly, because no one views videos on YouTube anymore. Plus, Google sucks. So, that's that. Uh, we are now part of the uh, Podomatic family. I signed a one-year deal with Podomatic uh, for... To be able to upload as many episodes as we want, we no longer are going to be doing the two episodes. We're going to upload an episode, and it's going to be up there for a pretty long time. I think we can go up to a year of episodes if we do one per week. Uh, with that mean meaning that we can do more episodes weekly if it gets to that point. Uh, if SmackDown ever takes off, Kevin and I will be doing probably uh, .5 reviews is what we call it, where we have our... Like, this is episode 18, then the Tuesday or our Thursday edition will be 18.5. So that's some other options. We can go, we can broaden our horizons a little bit, maybe do some NFL talk, which I think we've always wanted to do. Uh, MLB is right around the corner, so there's some of that. There will be no hockey chatter on here. (laughs) (laughs) For all you sport Kevin covers. (laughs) For all you hockey naysayers out there, or haysayers. So, yeah, that. That's about all I got for before we cut into the show. And we are sitting at... What are we looking at here? Uh, I don't know how to read this. I have no idea how long this is going. So whatever. So <laughs> It's the numbers it looked, above it. The number above it? Yeah. I do not see it. Oh. It should be like a five-digit number. Gotcha. So we're running around eight minutes. So that is a lot shorter intro. This is the third time we tried recording this. And uh, we are not going to be like some other podcasts that take 30 minutes to get in their goddamn podcast, like Ring Rust. <laughs> that would be that some other podcast, right? Uh, no disrespect. Uh, I listen to Ring Rust every week. I think they're very entertaining guys. Uh, I agree with some of the stuff they say. I disagree with a lot of the stuff they say. But as a, they're definitely a, a big reason why I started mine. Because uh, I was like, no, these are three guys like wrestling. They have way better credentials than any of us. They're actually professional writers. And they have a much larger following than us. But, I mean, very large. I mean, we are microscopic compared to these guys. And, you know, so they're definitely an inspiration to try to kind of get something going here. And I'm not giving up on it. Uh, Clearly, my other two co-hosts are dead. Well, that's what happens when you live in Wisconsin. Right. There is there was a huge blizzard uh, that came through Wisconsin the the what are we southeast yeah southeast. southeast part of Wisconsin and that's why Robert Roth is no actually Robert Roth isn't here because he had to work again and then uh, Day Day isn't here because he's in Arizona lucky bastard Who cares? Uh, but with that said let's dive into Monday Night Raw are we ready for I, I I've been procrastinating this because this show was not good. No, not it, by any stretch of the imagination. It wasn't good at all. And Marcus, what did you think of Monday Night Raw, just overall as a whole? If there was no KO, and that match between Cena and uh, Del Rio, Del Rio, it would have been pure trash, pure trash. Yeah, uh, definitely Cena being back on the show actually adds a little bit of star power back. Uh, Kevin Owens, you know, anytime Owens is on my TV set, I. I have to watch it and then rewatch it because the guy is absolutely amazing. Uh, so we open up with Mr. McMahon opens up Raw and he immediately calls out Roman Reigns. Roman comes down and this is just this is just some garbage. Uh, pretty much, Mr. McMahon said that he's hurt many members of his family. He hurt his uh, he hurt himself. His he brother-in-law. Hurt, I was getting to that. Oh his, my bad. His brother-in-law, which I'm thinking, like, who the fuck yeah, is who the Vince's? Fuck is that? Who's Vince's brother-in-law? And why is Roman Reigns hurting guys off-screen now? <laughs> uh, and hurting uh, Triple H is what he was going at. 
because he corrected himself. And then immediately we started getting Daniel Bryan chants. <laughs> yeah. Um, they also did CM Punk chants. Well, there was one other wrestler they were chanting. That was it. It was just those two. And then, uh, yeah, there was we had Daniel Bryan chants. We had CM Punk chants. And then uh, Vince McMahon got in Roman Reigns' face. Roman Reigns gave him the worst push I've ever seen. McMahon acted like he broke his neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was this whole segment was, was cringeworthy. Awkward. Was awkward. Stephanie came out with security, said arrest that man right there. Uh, they started telling Stephanie that they're not going to arrest him because they don't work for her, even though they were hired by her as security. Okay. <laughs> so, and then Vince McMahon somehow got ended up, up arrested. You want you want to run the show? My bad. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's just so. What blind. do you mean somehow he put his hands on a cop? I'm just saying, why the hell would he put his hand on the cops? Because There's no he's reason. Vince McMahon, he thinks he's untouchable. Here's... There's no reason for him to be mad. That's what I'm getting at. Sorry, <laughs> this this part this this first part just infuriates me because it honestly felt like a slap in the face to anybody that has intelligence of an IQ higher than five. I'm sorry. This was this was completely forced. This was uh, Vince, Mr. McMahon, just. Trying to put Roman Reigns over, but really didn't. He more put himself over. And because this whole story was about Vince McMahon, this whole thing. He put his hands on a police officer for what reason? There wasn't a real reason why he did it. It didn't make sense why he did it. Because he was threatening Stephanie. The officer was done talking to Stephanie. Like, it was done. Yeah, it was, yeah. And Roman Reigns had nothing to do with this whole, this was just awful. And then Mr. McMahon gets arrested. I mean, he deserved to get arrested, but it was stupid. Yeah, the, the best part about it, though, was the scenes when they were at the supposed uh, police station, and they had these these crews of people. There was, like, three or four people. Like, they, they were trying to build it up like it was this big thing, and there was only, like, three or four people at the door. They had a paparazzi there, kind of like Eminem's crew, or the Eminem tag team. And they were just, like, all there. And, like, waiting for McMahon to make a statement or leave or something. Renee Young was there, too. Why? I don't know. And they it was, like, literally like maybe, like, three cameramen and a bunch of lighting crew. Yeah. That was it. It was that bad. Uh, this whole segment was terrible. I You already know my feelings on the subject. I... I... It honestly is... So it was probably one of the, it was the worst promo I've seen in God knows how long. Yeah, it's it's right up there with the tater tot one. I mean, this I was, haven't seen the tater tot one though. It was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. So that leads us into what what what's going to come of this? I mean, are we going to get Roman Reigns versus Vince McMahon now? I mean, is this going to be a thing, or is this going to be? I mean, clearly, triple. I don't even know. I'm not even 100 percent convinced that Triple H is even coming back at this point because I imagine he would have been back by now. Because, I mean, he only got... I mean, Sheamus got destroyed with a steel chair at TLC. But then he's back and wrestles the very next night. I mean, literally the next night. Triple H gets hit, speared, and, you know, pretty much the same punishment that Sheamus suffered. And he's been off TV for three weeks. Well, Sheamus, Sheamus is a different beast, though, at this point in his career. Triple she, H is the game, man. You're, you're right, but let's look at it. How old is Triple H? 46. How old is Sheamus? Probably 37, I want to guess. Really? 37? 37, 36? That still freaks me out. Oh, the wrestlers' ages? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. I think we're going to get Roman Reigns versus uh, Triple H. I think that's, that's... That's the ultimate goal. And I think it's going to happen at Fastlane. I don't think it's going to be at WrestleMania. Uh, I think there's a possibility that Roman Reigns or Triple H cost Roman Reigns maybe his championship at the Rumble... And then, I don't, I I really don't, see, the thing with WrestleMania coming up is I really, really don't know what's going to, like, what the main event is. There's nothing really set in stone. I imagine that Brock Lesnar is going to be a part of it, some way or somehow. Uh, Maybe the authority will hire Brock Lesnar to go after Roman Reigns, because Brock Lesnar is just a hired gun. That's just what he is. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, what do you think? As far as that goes... The only thing I can really see happening is just a dead storyline. There's there's nothing to gain from it. That's what I'm trying to figure out. You're trying to put... If, if, if the end goal is to try to put Roman Reigns over, you shouldn't be doing it with Triple H. 
He hasn't put anybody over, from my recollection. He has over the last few years. Has he? Yeah, he... Uh, he He's not the same guy from four or five years ago. Oh. Since he stepped away and is no longer a competitor, he he has been trying to get guys over. Okay. That's, that's his thing now. Uh, he, in a way, made Roman Reigns look awesome at TLC. By him destroy like Roman Reigns destroying Triple H and destroying Sheamus. Uh, the thing is that Roman Reigns is over, but he wasn't tonight. He wasn't at all. He got kind of booed, not not completely like he has in the past, but he didn't get much of a crowd reaction, and fans were wanting, which Vince you know can shrug off a what he's used to that. But they and they were uh, chanting CM Punk. They're chanting Daniel Bryan. They're chanting Boring tonight. Uh, first off, I think this crowd kind of sucked. I didn't think it was a good crowd. No. Not that it wasn't energetic. It felt like they were trying to hijack the show. And the show was bad, but there's been worse Raws than this. And there was some good stuff in this Raw, and I'll get to that a little later. But, so with that said, I think that we're going to see probably... I don't know. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns is probably the favorite matchup right now at Mania. Uh, I think Triple H is going to face him at Fastlane, like I said. And I think we're going to get Roman Reigns, Sheamus at the Rumble. The rematch. And I think it is... And, you know, I'm okay with Roman Reigns versus Sheamus matches. They're good matches. They're just two... Two... Uh, Brutes. Bruisers just killing each other. Their match at TLC was great. I enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, I also like Sheamus, unlike other people. So... That's that's my opinion. Uh I don't I don't really know what's going to happen from that. That leads us to Kevin Owens versus Neville. And like I was saying before we went on air, if uh uh one of our friends that were watching the show with us asked me it's like what happens if Owens loses to Neville? And like right away. I'm like, "Well, I'm probably going to turn off the show and and cancel like not cancel the podcast, but just talk about Monday Night Football." <laughs> because this was first of all, this was a tough raw for me to watch because I'm a Denver Bronco fan. They're off. They're definitely fighting for their playoff spot right now. And I was much more. Uh, I'd rather have watched the Monday night game than this raw. But because I love you people so much, and I'm dedicating it, I wanted to put this show out for you. All nine of you. <laughs> <laughs> all nine of you that have downloaded us. What is it? Nine yeah, it's downloads? nine downloads. How many plays? 11. 11. All 11 of you that listen to us, including myself, so all 10 of you. And I'm sure that uh, Justin includes as one of those plays. So all, uh, you know what, fuck it. So let's not depress ourselves anymore. So this runs into Kevin Owens versus Adrian Neville. I'm thinking this could be a good match. And it ended on a roll-up within like a couple of seconds. Neville gets the win. And then Owens gets angry, throws Neville to the outside, absolutely destroys him. And then who comes down? Dean Ambrose. Marcus? Well, you know, in typical KO fashion, when somebody comes in and starts to push him around a little bit, you know, he takes off because, you know, he sets, the, he sets the rules for his fights. He doesn't want to fight unless there's nothing on the line. But the whole thing with Neville... Please, fucking go away. Just go away. I loved every minute of KO destroying him. I was hoping that he would, um, and I'm glad that after the roll-up that he did. Um, I'm, I'm just baffled the fact that this whole feud is over Wrestler of the Year Slammy. That, that's it. Breakout Superstar oh, of my the bad. Year. My bad. Breakout Superstar of the Year. As Andrew pointed out last time in the podcast, uh, last week, what the fuck has he done? Granted, now, I'm a casual fan. I haven't watched the entire year of Raw or any SmackDown at all, because that's just the B-team. Um, no, ready to chill. Nobody watches SmackDown. Uh, I don't even think uh, The King watches Raw. He commentates for SmackDown, but I don't think he watches Raw. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right. Because, <laughs> you know, he just does what he has to do. I don't... He doesn't care. Yeah. But regardless, it was... Uh, was not happy with the roll-up, but later on redeemed this whole shenanigans. We'll get into that a little bit later on, though. So, 
Ambrose comes out, makes the save, you know, like the classic baby face. And I'm saying, like, these two feuding again, like, I thought this feud was kind of done. Uh, I thought, and then you have kind of Owens feuding with two guys. I mean, clearly this is going to lead into Owens versus Ambrose again. Probably at the Rumble. If not, they'll do it before the Rumble. Or their feud will continue during the Rumble match. I don't know. Does Owens get the title back? I think so. Justin, uh, yeah. what do you think? You think he'll get the title back? I would hope so. Because Ambrose doesn't represent what a champion should be, I don't feel. Why do you say that? Because I guess according to the authority, he doesn't have the look. Or what they want to have a champion. He's got a better look than Ambrose. I'd rather have a fat guy than a sweaty homo. Hobo. 2015, (laughs) man. Come on now. We're not into that point yet. There's a podcast where we can say whatever the fuck we want. Owens looks like that fat guy who changes for gym. (laughs) That's what he looks like. That's me playing basketball. Now, the reason why we like Owens is because of his uh, charisma that he brings to the table. And his in-ring skill is off the charts as far as uh, being good. Uh, Ambrose is just as energetic, uh, just as entertaining. The problem with Ambrose is I'm just not a fan. But I can see why people like him and why he's a thing. Uh, I think that he's definitely a guy who probably needs a heel turn. Or some type of uh, ramp of his character. Or maybe WWE needs to do something with him to make him more entertaining. He's over with a certain amount of crowd. He's over with uh, fat chicks for some reason. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I I, I have I, you looked? Have you looked like a, a chart and it's the demographic and it's just yeah, fat Dean, chicks? Yeah, then... Dean Ambrose's demographic. Uh, P.S. Powers, uh, not a friend of mine, but uh, a a fellow guy that I'm subscribed to on YouTube has made that joke. But he was he said it like originally it was a joke. But he said he went to a WWE live event, and he said, like, well, let me remind you, I haven't watched WWE in about, about a year and a half. So, but he knew who Dean Ambrose was. And he didn't he didn't understand how the comb-over look is over. Like, he just didn't understand that. Like, why does they let him look like that? Right. But he comes down, and he says that he was sitting in the first row, and the second deck started rumbling because it was all the fat chicks jumping up and down. <laughs> he thought that the arena was going to collapse because of when Dean Ambrose came out. But he also doesn't like Kevin Owens. He doesn't like anybody. Uh, fuck him. <laughs> he says that the WWE is about larger than life uh, characters and larger than life uh, athletes. And like when you grow up, that you're like, as a kid, I want to look like that. Like I can understand what you're saying. Like what he's saying from that. Like when I was a kid, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, uh, were kind of like the big names. Nobody ever wanted to grow up to be Mick Foley. No. Everyone wanted to grow up to be. The uh, to look like The Rock, to look like Austin, or even if you're if you're a bigger guy, you're like, eh, you know, I wouldn't mind looking like The Big Show, at least back then. Oh yeah. So I mean, like guy, so like stuff like that, and then T.S. Powers like, who wants to look like Dean Ambrose or wants to look like Kevin Owens? <laughs> it's an interesting video. Uh, we'll probably not plug it. So because <laughs> I don't I don't know the name of it. I think something like why wrestling PG sucks or something like that, but definitely worth a worth a watch. It's it's pretty good analysis. So I was talking about we were talking about what can they do to get this show back on track because like I felt like they kind of fucked up with the Kevin Owens thing because the Ambrose save which didn't make sense at the time. The opening segment was awful. What are they gonna do? Let's have a Divas match. Now, granted. Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. This was not a bad match. Uh, I thought it was a good match. I just thought the timing was wrong. I felt that the, they didn't. There wasn't a story or narrative to the match, and that's just because that's just WWE. They just don't put any emphasis into anything they do because none not, of it's relevant. Not just that, but the, they're even less uh, detail oriented with, with the Divas matches as well. Right. Oh, Putting any story behind it for that matter. They've been getting better at it, but. Overall, no. They they usually don't put a lot of emphasis behind their their women's wrestlers. And uh, here's here's my gripe with the crowd. So these these are the same people that maybe not the same exact crowd, but the WWE universe. These are the same fans 
that bitched about, I want to see Sasha Banks. I want to see Sasha Banks. To the point where we even acknowledged it last week that Sasha gets a chance during other wrestlers' matches. Including the men wrestlers. Her and Bailey get chance. We've, we've established this. Sasha was getting chance during the whole Divas Revolution they were doing when they came when all the rookies came up. So, and you got Becky Lynch who's part of that revolution. So what do you do? You put the two in a match. You know, these guys had a, guys, these women had a great feud in NXT between Sasha and Becky. And you put them together in a match. It kind of runs a little long, but the fans just booed the shit out of it. They were chanting boring. They were chanting CM Punk. They were chanting, uh, what are some other chants did you yeah, I, I, noticed? I should have wrote them all down, but I didn't. Yeah, I can't remember the other ones, but those were the two most prevalent ones. It's like, guys, what what what, what do you want? You, they give you what you want them to give you, and then you boo the shit out of it because of what? Because they're not hitting each other with chairs. I don't understand what you want from the from these women. Women typically, as far as a wrestling match is concerned, don't work as fast as some of the good men do. They just don't, and that has nothing to do with men versus women or anything like that. It's probably an athletic thing. But as far as like a speed of a match, they were trying to tell a story. I don't know what it was, but it was because I wasn't paying attention to it that much. But from what I saw, I thought it was okay. Yeah, I uh, for a women's match, I normally end up just sitting there droning out through most of the match. Right. But this match uh, had me interested from the get go. Um, again, it was slow, and I think that was the biggest gripe about uh, uh, gripe about it, especially because of the fact there was no real background other than this is Sasha Banks. You know, this is Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch, and they're going at it. But what I think it really ends up is his timing, because you can't go back to back crap and then expect them to be able to put to on pick it back to up. Pick it back up. This would have been a good opportunity to bring out the new day. Yeah, I, I thought that this would have they should have put the new day in this spot instead of later in the show, because I think the new day could have got the show back heated. I think once when the new day actually. When their segment came out, the show picked up significantly better. Like, it turned out to be, like, an actual wrestling product rather than whatever the hell that first hour was. Yeah. Kind of like our show. (laughs) And we're still within the first hour. (laughs) (laughs) So, I wrote, okay, match. Uh, Sasha Banks got some heat, uh, being that she wore a Patriot hat. She said, this is a real team, because they're in Brooklyn. So I thought you that really was, lost. I thought that was uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, they all were wearing Patriots stuff. Yeah. So that was kind of funny. Uh, that will get you heel heat anywhere you go outside of New England. And that was that. You got anything to add? Um, outside, this is my first time watching Lynch wrestle. I've watched Sasha a couple of times, but I came out impressed with Sasha. Not Sasha, but uh, Becky. Um, the fact that. She she held her own. She actually looked like she knew what she was doing. It's not the typical divas match that I'm actually accustomed to seeing. Just a whole bunch of pretty little women running around, scantily clad stuff, and just flopping around. It was actually enjoyable to watch. Yeah, they were trying to they were trying to do a technical wrestling match, and I appreciate it. I just thought the timing was wrong. Yeah, absolutely. it's not their fault at all. It's no, definitely no. WWE's fault for putting this in this spot. They were set up to fail. Yeah, exactly. It's real similar, and this is the nice thing about this show, is I always have to bring the past into certain things. Now, we're going to rewind the clock a little bit, probably about, I think, 12 years ago. 2003 would have been the year. So, what is that, 11 years ago? I'm really bad with numbers. 12? <laughs> 12 that's, 12, that's 12. That's 12? Okay. Almost so, 13. So, um, this was almost 12 years ago. Or I don't, this it was would. actually almost 13 years ago, because it would have been the Royal Rumble. So January 2003, you have Triple H and Scott Steiner as one of your main events before the Rumble match itself, obviously. They put on one of the worst matches for a title match in pay-per-view in a long time during that span. Because Scott Steiner, Steiner back then was or still, just in general, was just awful. Could not move, could not sell. Could not do really anything except for belly to belly suplexes. He's a walking steroid. Right. <laughs> you have Triple H, which at that time, that was kind of his peak. Uh, his matches weren't that good during this time period. So 
You put the two together and you have an absolute disaster. And it went on forever. And it was overbooked to shit. You had referee bumps. You had interferences. It was ridiculous. Just, just what the story they were telling. And it was awful. And the fans started booing it. And it was just such in a spot where it was like, how do you re- rebound from that? How do you rebound from that craptastic match? You put on Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit the next match. They those had are to, some fun. What? Those are some fun matches. They had to go out and follow that, and they got the fans right back into it, which got people excited for the Rumble match, the one that Lesnar won, which was a, one of their better Royal Rumble matches, by the way. So you can start off a show bad, and you have to know it's bad. However, there's no way in hell that Vince McMahon is going to be like, you guys did a terrible job with that opening segment because he was part of the whole thing. <laughs> so he's not going to acknowledge it being bad or even probably think it was bad. He probably thought it was genius. Probably. He's probably like, man, you know it would be a great idea? I get arrested. That's never been done before. <laughs> I, I, he's geriatric, like his daughter said. Exactly. So, that's terrible. So, so what I'm saying about that is you can recover by putting on your hottest act to get the fans back into it. Maybe not your hottest, but one of your hottest acts. And that would have been the New Day. And they come out next. And they were awesome. Once again, uh, they came out. They did their little uh, their thing they always do. Biggie with his gyrating hips that he does. Yeah. He was doing snow angels. Yeah, in the middle fucking, of the ring. Fucking snow angels. Awesome. And you have Kofi Kingston. And you know what's nice to see Kofi Kingston given a character for once? Yeah. Like, we've seen him in WWE for like 10 years. He's been there for a long time. And I'm just saying, it's just about time that he's given some kind of, like, creative freedom to kind of do what he wants. New Day, I think, is the only team that's allowed to, like, go off script. Because they're just so good at it. And, you know, they're, they're awesome. The, the whole thing. Oh, uh, what do you think of the New Day? What do you think? Because this is the second time you've seen New Day now. What do you think of them? Uh, each and every single time I see them, my uh, man crush on them grows even stronger. Uh, to be <laughs> honest, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is the uh, Biggie's my favorite by far. Easy, easily. Um, I love the trombone though, because uh, during the middle of the match, uh, there's a few times where I don't know who is the one that has the trom- the trombone. Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods. Uh, there'd be times where they'd match up the trombone with an attack, uh, with a with a, an actual wrestling move, and I found it so awesome. It is just it's cool how they they all play off each other rather than like most tag teams just kind of exist coexist with each other. Or one guy trying to put himself over the team. Yeah, just like well, maybe WWE will recognize me, <laughs> Edge. But <laughs> but yeah, the uh, yeah the new day is amazing. So. We get Kofi Kingston versus Kalisto. And this was an okay match. I mean, Kalisto is definitely good. Uh, Kofi Kingston, you know, we've seen everything from Kofi. Uh, These guys put on, you know, the best they could do. And it ends in a roll-up, which is fine. It doesn't matter because it's a one-on-one match. It doesn't matter towards the team. And they're leaving the ring. And I think Xavier Woods calls them cheaters. Because yeah. cause Sin Cara, like, interfered, even though New Day interfered first. Sin Cara, like, was, like, like helped his buddy out, and they called him cheaters. And they said, like, well, you're going to, like, Xavier Wood takes off his shirt. He's ready to go. He's like, you're going to take on uh, the New Day, and you're going to take on someone, and I'm going to make sure of it. So you're going to be facing Big E. <laughs> After talking, you know, about a couple minutes of trash about how he's going to destroy him, and he's just like, "Nah, you're going to go ahead and face Biggie." <laughs> so they do a match. This was kind of overbooked. It was awesome though. Yeah, there were a lot of run-ins. There's a lot of crazy shit going on, and then Biggie gets the win off of his uh, big ending. Uh, I love his like running into you move. I don't know what it is, but he runs at you full speed and just throws his body into you. Ha! <sighs> <laughs> Yeah? Just yeah. like that. Just so that, you know, you people at home could watch that, too. Yeah. It's that a good imitation. Thing. It's a good thing we're on video, too. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. people would just, like, no, have no idea what you did there. Yeah. He's actually drinking a Diet Coke. That's why he's excited. 
What? All right, moving onward. So, overall, what does this mean for New Day? Uh, for New Day, I don't really see it meaning much, to be honest with you. I mean, they might, even though they already kind of have somewhat of a feud with uh, the Lucha, is it Lucha Dragons? Yeah. Yeah, they kind of have a feud with them, but there's, there's, this will be forgotten about next week. You think so? Yeah. I think they're going to do a, a tag team title match between the two. And I think New Day goes over to set up for their big match against their, their finally their big tag team match against the Usos. Because those are the only two tag teams they have. Yeah. Maybe, just maybe Enzo and Big Cass will be brought up soon. Probably not. And, you know, or maybe the, uh, the VOD villains. I'm hoping that. That'd be awesome if they make their debut at the Rumble. And eliminate the Usos. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? That would be. And they have Aiden English flexing in the ring. Yeah. Be sweet. Aiden English just yells, Spotlight, please! <laughs> <laughs> I love Aiden English. When, couldn't you think that uh, the hell, Blake and Murphy would be up before those two? No. Because no. I think Blake and Murphy are just going to be used as NXT feeders. They're just going to bring in this new NXT tag team and, ha- and then have Blake and Murphy be fed to them. So they have something down there. Because okay. that's kind of what they used Enzo and Big Cass for, for a while. And then they realized these guys were kind of over, let's move them. Oh, they're definitely over. Yeah. So, moving on from New Day. So, we have this weird Miz TV. Whatever the fuck this was. So, it's a bunch of guys that haven't been utilized on the roster in a long time. And they all talk about how 2016 is going to be their year. Please read that roster, please. So The Miz comes out first. Then Ryback. Totally butchered that name. (laughs) Ryback. He comes out saying, oh, nobody cares about the past. That's when you had a title, so you should kind of care. Yeah, no one cares about the past, even though... The only thing you've done. He's actually had a pretty good 2015 compared to 14. Uh, Then... I think after Ryback comes out, uh, Zack Ryder comes out. Yeah. And says, does his woo 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 shit. And then uh, Our Truth comes out and then begs everybody to vote for him to be the, uh, the, LOL, the LOL moment of the year, I think. No, it was Superstar of the Year. And then oh. Miz corrected him, saying that you won the LOL moment of the year. Last I think, week. No, I think he was asking for the LOL because he was nominated for it. He wasn't nominated for Superstar of the Year. No, he said that anybody could have been voted in for it, so therefore uh, you should vote for me. Because Miz said, you already won. Yeah, you already won the LOL award oh. last week. Okay. So, our truth pulled, I think he's trying to have another moment. I don't know. He Slater comes out. And then I'm thinking, I'm like... Who else can they bring out? Oh, Goldust. Goldust was another yeah, one. Yeah, Goldust. Actually, he was the no, person right Yeah, he, was, he, he came out. Doesn't matter. Who else They're, could they bring out? I'm like, who else? Who haven't we seen yeah, in a while? It's gotta be Titus and Darren Young, right? The Big Show. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Show comes out, and he Slater gets in his face, and he just knocks him the fuck out. Good. And throws everyone out of the ring, including Ryback. And then declares that he's going. He's entered in the Royal Rumble, and he's going to be entry number one, and he's going to win it and take the WWE title and shove it down all of our faces. Because we had like a little chant of "Please retire" chance going on at him, but not a, not a whole lot. He played off of it because I think he was expecting the chance, but didn't really get him. Yeah, because I don't think anyone gives a fuck about Big Show at this point. And then he leaves. He leaves, and then we come back to commercial break, and he's fighting right back. And then they went to commercial break, and I don't really think there was a winner. No, uh, that's because uh, Big Show just walked off. Okay. That was that. Yeah, that was that. That was the the segment just in general? The segment just in general. Um, I mean, I guess in a way, they have to make, they have to earn what they get paid for. So, I mean, you might as well just throw them all in one fucking jumbled mess and be like, okay, cool. At least I paid him to do something. Get destroyed by the destroyed by the big show and then 
possibly have a feud later on with Ryback again. <laughs> no one wants to see that, though. No one wants to see another Big Show Ryback feud. Or another Big Show Ryback match. Or a Big Show match. I was about to say or a Big Show match at this point. Big Show, it's really time it, It's for time. Him. Hang up the boots. Yeah. But you loved his knee pads. Yes. Big Show debuted these new fucking sweet ass knee braces. They're Don Joys. Yeah, they look amazing. Like I want those so badly. Like cuz uh I obviously have nerve damage in my legs. So I wear knee braces every day for at work and those look so comfortable. They look like they're easy to put on. They look like they work. I was excited. I was like, dude, Big Show was giving a shit today. He took the time to put on knee pads. When was the last time we seen Big Show wear knee pads? Like 2003? When he used to wear jeans? Oh, dear God. That was a while ago. Yeah. But, I mean, like, it's been a while since we've seen Big Show in knee pads. So, like, this is... Is this going to be a new revamped Big Show? A new Big Show that's going to give a shit? I'd hope so. I mean, it's it's better than watching him just come out and then just get dogged every time. <laughs> Boy, I hope this is a preview that those two are the first two and Ryback eliminates him in, like, 30 seconds. No. I want Ryback to be eliminated. I, I, I want him to get cut from the roster. I hate the guy so much. I just, that would be your big show retire and the next guy eliminates Ryback right away. No. Did you know that Ryback and Kevin Owens had a feud a few months ago? Oh, Over did not know. Over the title? Uh, so, the reason I say that is this this will just make you love Kevin Owens even more. Uh, Ryback has this book, like, Secret of Life or some type of... What the fuck some is type this guy of, on? Some type of book that, like... He doesn't write it. It's like a book that changed his life or something like that. Some inspirational book. And he was he uh, had the book and he had a, a package of lean pockets and he took a picture of it and he tweeted it at Kevin Owens because that's how feuds start now and <laughs> they start over social media and it said uh, it said like, here here's something that might help you with your life or something like that and then Owens replied back he's like oh great now I have to eat shitty uh, hot pockets and read your stupid book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was, something it, like it was that. the Art of War in Lean Pockets. It was yeah. just great. Yeah. What was it called? Yeah, the Art of War. Okay. So that's what he's here for. So it, it's they they've had that their feud was actually kind of funny because Kevin Owens just make him look like an idiot. I think there was one time he came out talking about this that stupid book and Owens. Uh, I think Ryback said something like, "Did you even did you even read the book?" And Owens like, "Do you even know how to read?" <laughs> That's the more legitimate question here. Can he actually read a book? Like, uh, right back, or uh, Owen's like, I'm surprised you've actually read a book. Outside Cat of the Hat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Red sure fish, he... blue fish. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ryback could read that book. Red fish, blue fish, feed me more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> feed me more fish. <laughs> it's like, no, Owens, you don't eat the fish. <laughs> <laughs> Ryback, sorry. Uh, anyways... Fuck Ryback. Ryback sucks. I agree. Fuck it. Kevin? <laughs> Whatever. He's like Scott Steiner. He's a walking steroid. Uh, yeah, oh, another thing. He came out and called, said the Miz looked stupid. Yeah, and he looked like a fucking Smurf. <laughs> he looked like a Jack he Smurf. He does look like a Smurf. <laughs> like, you're going to come out and call the The Miz looked absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, he definitely looked like a hipster. Now, at this point, it's Michael Cole saying, that's fashion. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to like the word he said. I don't think Michael Cole has a boner for The Miz anymore. Oh, because every time, I swear, every time The Miz comes out, he goes, what are you talking about? That's fashion. Maybe. I don't know. I think Possibly. that's more think GBL, we just, but... I think we were laughing more at the people that were coming out rather than actually listening to what they were having to say. Because it didn't matter. So yeah. it's a preview for the Hype Bros. Ryder comes out and they're no. going to get called up? No. Not happening. Sorry. I wish. Uh, so this leads us into our six-man tag match that they were advertising. Ambrose and the Usos versus the League of Nations, Sheamus, Rusev, and Bad News Barrett. Man, that shame has fallen since he lost the title, huh? Yeah. Right Holy back, shit. Right back where he started. <laughs> Holy shit. They just stuck him right back where he was right before he won the title. It's disappointing. Uh, I honestly thought that Sheamus was going to be put more in a main event spot because of him getting Roman Reigns over. I mean, he got him over, and I thought that they would give him some kind of reward by giving him a main event program. 
Granted, he's going to job to Roman Reigns next week, but I just don't think that it's... Holy shit. That's all I got to say. Oh, man, you want to talk about a match that's going to be overbooked. That championship match next week is going to be brutal. I, I, I don't care. I don't care about it. Uh, Roman Reigns can't wrestle, so... Roman Reigns in a against Sheamus isn't going to be a good one on one match. You need some kind of like. Uh, you need to have some interference. Vince yeah. is the special guest referee. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be great. Ugh. So, and um, by the way, I I, I just got to say I really hate the fucking Superman punch. It is the weakest looking thing ever. I I, I just. Yeah, what do you do? You cock your fist and oh my god, now it's like explosive. Now it's loaded. Now it's, it's loaded. Lethal. It's and lethal. to be honest. I've never liked the spear, just as a move. It's not a wrestling move. It's it's a football tackle. I know, it's all too well. I, I understand it. Like I understand like why people think it looks cool, but it's not a move. No. And honestly, does he have a move? Roman Reigns, like, does he have a single Couldn't you move? think they could just equip him with a power bomb like they did Batista? And I don't just... think he knows how to do a power bomb. He did one with the shield. Yeah, it's because not, it... not the triple power bomb. He actually did like a wind up power bomb. I don't, he was rem- with the I shield. don't remember that. I didn't. Those are the dark ages of wrestling. I wasn't really watching around that time. Seems to be a lot of that recently. So, the darker ages. I didn't circle a winner. I think Sheamus got a pin, right? Sheamus was pinned. Sheamus got pinned? I believe so. No. He pinned some, He broke kicked somebody. It was like... Oh, no, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. He broke kicked he, one of the Usos or something, right? Yeah, he, uh, he ended up uh, kicking out and then giving the bro kick. Right. Uh, it they, was, yeah, it was the Uso. Right, so they gave Sheamus the win. I guess that's cool. I'm pretty sure Barrett did not get tagged in this match. No, it's the second time he's shown up and did nothing on the side. He's still injured. I figured as much. He shouldn't be on TV if he's hurt. That's They're not going to do anything for him. They shouldn't just, they just keep him off TV. Or or you can keep him on TV, but keep him out of the ring. Yeah. Because it's... It, I don't know. It's, it just doesn't seem to be very useful. It, it, he does nothing. He doesn't add anything to the match. He doesn't, like, try to, you know, interact or, like, not interact, but, like, disrupt the, the, the opponents at all. Or He just stands there, does nothing, picks his nose... Picks a wedgie. And that's about it. You like Rusev? I love Rusev. I like him too. Uh, he always has that intensity. And I'm pretty sure he got broke kicked like twice in this match. Yeah. Rusev got broke kicked twice? <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe not. It was like no, once. It, it but was once, but... He like did the same thing. He Barrett was... Or, or he was holding uh, one of the Usos and Sheamus came and broke kicked him instead. Okay. <laughs> There's some cool stuff in the match. Uh, so they win. Uh, Ambrose gets to the outside, and then who shows up? Kevin K-O. Owens. Kevin Owens shows up, throws him into the stairs, then throws him into the ramp, and gives him a sick power bomb to the table. Marcus, it was absolutely. I actually called earlier on in the uh, in the episode uh, saying that KO would be back in that match later on, um, but. It was absolutely fun to watch. KO um, is really the only thing I want to watch Raw for and what he ends up doing because anything he does is just over the top for me because of the fact that it's actually wrestling and something that's... Just just rewatch the first part. Rewatch the first part. And then, you know, watch anything KO does and you'll, you'll appreciate KO so much more. Go and watch anything he did in NXT. If you like this attitude from him, watching him powerbomb people on ring aprons is just great. He ran a gimmick once, well, not a gimmick, but he ran a thing through NXT where he wasn't even winning matches on pinfall or submission for a while. He was powerbombing guys until the ref would call the match. Damn. He, that's how he won the NXT title. I remember hearing about that. He powerbombed... Was it Zayn? Sami Zayn, like, a bunch of times until the ref, like... It's made him stop power bombing, guys. It was six pop up power bombs before Zayn was just dead. Jesus, he took six of them. Six of them in a row, like he'd hit it and then he'd pick him up and throw him against the ropes again, six times, and then the ref just <laughs> called it. <laughs> Holy shit! And then their rematch, he did the same thing to him. He uh, power bombed him on the ring apron, and they called it. They called the match. Yeah. 
And then he just started power bombing people on the apron and kept doing it and doing it and doing it. I know this doesn't have much to do with the actual wrestling, so I don't know if you guys have anything to more add about the, the KO and the actually doing the wrestling part, I just wanted to add that I found it very funny that they actually took the teleprompters and put it back into the broken desk. I was going to say, why do they still have those things? Why are teleprompters even a thing anymore? It's know. 2015. They don't have like little fucking smart pads they could have out there instead? No, Something those things... Much... They, no, they all have an iPad at ringside, I swear to God. They do, but they don't use it for... They actually, the teleprompters actually have like the matches in it. I swear those told, things run DOS. I swear they do. They're told to call. They're told to call the matches as they see it on TV, not as they see it in the ring. They're not supposed to look at the ring when they call the match. They're supposed to watch it on the teleprompter. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. There was like a little report that came out last year about yeah. what announcers are allowed to say and what they're not allowed to say. Hmm. Like for example, they can't say. Uh, they can't say the strap. They have to call it the WWE Championship. And they can't call it the belt either. It's Why can't they call it that? Just terms that Vince doesn't want being used. Oh, okay. Uh, just certain things. It's remember... got to be called championship. Yeah. Well, well I guess for branding reasons that makes sense. You should actually pull that up. See if you can find it online. What? The the list of the, what announcers are allowed to say. Okay. Google it or something while we're uh, sure. continuing on. Because... It'd be kind of interesting to read that off because there, there's like a lot of things that they're not allowed to say. Uh, that one of them is like call what's on the prompter, not what you see in the ring. Uh, don't use. There's like certain like burying techniques that they weren't allowed to say. Like they're not allowed to try to put themselves over. Stuff like that. Hmm. Stuff that I'm pretty sure JBL violates every week. <laughs> every time. Yeah. Who was the other guy that, um, that sat on the right side? Of the Saxton. Day? Can we just take that guy out back? He's pretty bad. Jeez. He's tolerable. He's better than Booker. I guess, yeah. Uh, the King sucks. Like, uh, PG King is terrible. Right. Oh, I do like the fact that... You got it? Yeah. Uh, they're not allowed to... The words they're supposed to avoid, you can't use belt or strap... Uh, they don't want you calling it the business. Right, that was another one. Uh, don't call it a feud or a war. Uh, or the performance or the performer. Uh, don't call it a house show, call it a live event. Don't call it backstage, use in the back. Uh, yeah. don't use pro, ris- pro wrestler, call him an athlete. Uh, don't call him international, call him global. Uh, it's not a... No title shots. It's a title match. Uh, don't say U.S., say United States. So these are all things that they used to say in the late 90s that they don't say anymore. Gotcha. So it would be nice like when you watch another program or a thing, see if they violate any of these. Michael Cole never will because Michael Cole has no soul anymore at this point. <laughs> Keep going, Justin. Um, fans... Uh... Address them, don't address fans as you fans. Address them as Raw fans or R fans or Cena fans. Or WWE fans. Or WWE fans. Uh, don't say hospital, use medical center. Don't say faction, use group. Faction. And then please use now available instead of on sale when prompting sales. Makes sense. Uh, and don't say the title is on the line, please use the title will be defended. Okay. Alright. And so, I'm pretty sure every time there's a title match, Cole says the title is on the line. No. He says the title will be defended. I don't think he says on the line anymore. I think that was more Jim Ross that did that. Probably one of the reasons why they let him go, because he probably didn't go by the thing. Now, there's no uh, proof that this is an actual uh, document from WWE. Mm-hmm. It, it surfaced, and people just started using it. Mm-hmm. But they said it came from an official, but who knows? Right. It could have been just hacked. Uh, or made by a hack. Man, excuse me. I got heartburn today. Where are we at on this uh, exquisite podcast today? So, that leads us into... Well, pretty much, what did you think of the Kevin Owens segment just in general? 
And w- do you think you're going to get an Ambrose Kevin Owens feud? As far as the, the actual feud. <laughs> what that means it is war zone time where all the racial jokes and death like jokes that. basically anything goes no holds barred right pretty much no holds barred which means there's the filters are we try to keep the first hour informative sure we drop our f-bombs but this part of the show is supposed to be more used for like tangents and stuff like that like stuff we talk about that might not have anything to be wrestling related. Just us having fun as people. We try to stay away from the racial jokes. I don't do racial jokes. At least I try to stay away from them. At least enough of them on the air. It's career suicide. So. <laughs> <laughs> so where were we? Oh. Uh, John Cena versus Alberto Del Rio. So. He's back. Cena's back. Hooray. Cena's back. Oh, Hooray! I actually am happy that Cena was back because outside of KO and Ambrose, the entire slate of the first part of it is just who, why, and where. Like, it's just why are these people in the ring? What are they doing there? And what are they trying to accomplish with this? So, Del Rio actually has probably his. I would say probably his best promo of the year. It was yeah, good. It was, it was really good. It was good banter between the two. Cena always has a good thing of trying to get the best out of guys in promos. And pretty much calls him not a man. Calls him like all this stuff. And uh, clearly he's been watching the show. And not the king. But I mean he's been watching the show. Uh, which is which is nice. And he... They referred to, he referred to him as not a man, a coward. He won't, pretty much trying to goad him into putting on the U.S. title on the line. Eventually, Del Rio kept switching in between English and Spanish in his promo, which I kind of digged it a little bit. It, it worked because you knew what he was saying. But, I mean, you knew what he was implying. Probably didn't know exactly what he was saying, but you knew what he was saying. Yeah. That actually was a very interesting uh, part of it. That was one of my biggest knocks against Del Rio early on. He couldn't really speak, and half the time he spoke, you couldn't understand a lick of his English. But he's actually gotten a lot better with that. And now that he goes back and forth between English and Spanish, it's actually a really nice twist. Uh, it was nice that the... Okay, so the League of Nations. So he's with Sheamus, who once again takes a complete back seat on this. Wade Barrett, who probably needs to go home. And then, <laughs> and Rusev, which is pretty much utilized as the muscle of the group. No Lana, by the way. And so, does that bother you a little bit that Sheamus is kind of taking a backseat to this feud or should he even be out there? The, the thing that bothered me the most about that was throughout this, he was standing behind the other guys. And it's not like he was standing up back there saying, like, and barking out orders and telling people to go attack. No, he was standing back there and just being forgotten about. He wasn't making his presence felt at all. It was like Del Rio is in charge of the yeah. animations, where last week it was Sheamus, and the week before it was Sheamus, but this week it's Del Rio. I mean, it's a cool group, not faction. I like all the guys that are in it, but the thing is that I feel that Del Rio should have been out there with... I don't think Sheamus should have been out there as part of I don't of this, think so either. As part of this thing because Neither Barrett. Well Barrett Barrett could have been out there with the promo, but I mean like Sheamus should have been like they maybe should have done a cut scene in the back or something like that, why Sheamus wouldn't have been out there. Sheamus is like, Well, I they should have announced that he's gonna be facing Roman Reigns in the future and they say, Well, Sheamus is gonna go home because he's gonna or Sheamus is gonna go in the back and work out a little bit because he's gonna get prepared for his championship match kind of put over the WWE title and that way the because to me the WWE title seems like it's below the US title right now because of John Cena being involved because why does Cena want the US title over the WWE title at this point right because the title seemed to be in the same grasping area 
because you got him feuding with Del Rio. Reigns is feuding with Sheamus, but Sheamus is below Del Rio, and Reigns is below Cena. But Reigns has the title, and Del Rio has the title. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you have you have Sheamus, who is the top guy in the League of Nations, or so we think. He's he is he's the top guy. He's feuding against Reigns, who isn't the top guy between... Like, he isn't the top guy. Cena's the top guy. But shame, But Reigns has the title. He's below Cena. So... Isn't everybody below Cena? Yes, that's the problem. Oh, that's the same if thing he, as Seth Rollins having the title, though. How is it the same thing as Seth Rollins having the title? Because Cena going after a U.S. championship being the biggest star in the company, why would he just go after Seth Rollins' title? Because he did, and he lost. Yeah. He, if you remember the feud, the reason he he lost in the he lost his WrestleMania shot, and so he had to. He said he was going to enter in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Stephanie told him that the only way you're going to be having a match at WrestleMania is if you get uh, Rusev to agree upon a match with you. So you know that was the only way he could get a match at WrestleMania. It just happened to be for the U.S. title. So he won the title and wanted to re... Uh, um, I always butcher the word, but try to make it... Uh, bring the title up a bit. So rejuvenize? Is that the right word? Rejuvenate. Rejuvenate? The prestige? R- both those words. <laughs> Rejuvenate the prestige of the <laughs> United <laughs> States title. And with that, with that said, you have... So he did that. And then... He lost the title to Del Rio, which is... Well, he lost it to, to a Seth Rollins first time and then got it back. But the fact is that Seth Rollins was WWE champion because he cashed in a briefcase. But then he just kept defending it, and the authority would keep Cena away from the world title. Because that was the story they were doing at the time. He wasn't going to get a world title match because the authority wasn't going to allow it. So... That's the reason why he didn't just keep challenging for the world title. Now at the point is you have Reigns who's champion, but he's still clearly below Cena. Del Rio is clearly below Sheamus. And you have Cena feuding with the lower guy of the League of Nations. The only way I would have done this differently is either removed Sheamus from the League of Nations or had the... have. Cena be feuding with Sheamus just in general instead of feuding with Del Rio you could have used this particular match where uh, Sheamus actually ends up going after John Cena because of the way he destroyed say uh, Del Rio or you could have I was going to get to that or you could have Cena defeat Del Rio for the United States title and then you have Sheamus defeats uh, Cena, or do you have them feud over the U.S. title? Which is probably where they're going to go with it, I would imagine. I would assume so. so. He's had a good feud with everybody in the League of Nations. Yeah, well, his feud with Barrett was... Well, that was talking the about Nexus, the 2010 but... feud. Yeah, the one where he got buried. But the... Uh, I think that's the way you would go, and... But right now, Sheamus and Reigns and Cena and all of them need to be not in the same ring with each other. You need, you need Cena more in a feud with Del Rio and not the League of Nations, and you need Sheamus in his feud with Reigns and not, or you could have include that because it's a bigger, it's a bigger match. But knowing the WWE, we're gonna have like a Reigns and John Cena versus Sheamus and Del Rio. That'll tag be match. the main event at Raw probably two weeks from now because they're gonna do the uh, title match next week. Of course, or they'll do it on SmackDown because why not? It's the Teddy Long Show. He's still on that show? No, it was a joke. Oh, okay. it's, always, it's a joke. <laughs> he, he, every main event of SmackDown is always a tag team match. Because of him. And every like YouTuber that covers it or podcaster always refers to, oh, Teddy Long would love this show. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like whoever the heels are feuding with with the face, and Teddy Long's like, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to have ourselves a tag team match. And this is where you go, oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Cena wins, but it's via DQ, therefore Del Rio retains the title. 
Uh, Reigns comes out. You have the League of Nations with a beatdown, and Reigns is in the ring because he just took out League of Nations like all by himself. Again, yeah, all three of them. Again, yeah, and he beats Sheamus with a chair again. No, I thought it was. Uh... Did Sheamus get out of the ring in time? He hit him with that chair. Yeah, because uh, no, uh, Sheamus was going at him with the chair. And yeah, Superman, uh, punch. Superman punched. Superman punched. Then he picked up the chair. Yeah. And then he, then just... he hit Sheamus, and Sheamus left the ring. Yeah. Then he came out and speared the shit out of Rusev. That was a pretty sweet spear, though. And I think Del Rio, too. I mean, he Superman punched Del Rio. Yeah. What's new, though? Nothing. Superman punches everybody. Right. And then Vince McMahon came back from jail... I got Superman punched. No, he said on the ring that you're going to defend the title against Sheamus, and Roman Reigns is like, who cares? And Sheamus is like, who cares? <laughs> and I will be the referee. And then the crowd said, who cares? And the crowd is like, who cares? <laughs> who cares? So we're going to get a who cares match next week. Reigns is winning. Can we call it that? Like that could that be the title on the promo <laughs> on TV? The who cares match? Special guest referee Vince McMahon. Yeah. It's it's to the point where it doesn't really matter at this point. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, Marcus, you got anything to add to Monday Night Raw? Overall, uh, a shit show brought up by a couple of really... Uh, a good thing with KO, actually an amazing thing with KO. Um, John Cena's back, and the fact that you know the Divas match actually was pretty good. Yeah. Justin? Well, I didn't watch the show, but after listening to it, it almost put me to sleep. It was rough at some spots, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't for the Monday Night Football game, I probably would have dreaded doing this. I mean, I did dread doing, like, do it watching the show, but I mean, like, the Monday Night Football game just kept me awake. I was at work praying to get the text that the Broncos won, because it's like, if... The Bengals win. Andrew's going to be crabby and not want to do the podcast. I'm usually pretty much the same, regardless. Yeah, he's pretty even keel for the most part. I, I, you know, I get excited during the games. When the game's over, it's over. I'm not going to take it out on a wrestling podcast. Yeah, That's during during the game though, he'll be you know he'll be yelling and just screaming like any, like anybody though. But afterwards, he's like, well, they play like a bunch of fucking retards or you know whatever it may be. Speaking of which, did uh, speaking of football, since we're on that topic, did you see the uh, Clay Matthews thing where he went to go oh, pick yeah, up the, and then I saw like, took that. it away? I love how emo and how fans are turning on him now. I find it hilarious. I actually saw you. I saw what you're talking about. Oh, did you see the uh, the, the post? Oh yeah, that you were commenting. So on? someone posts, someone posts, and I pretty much say like he's always been a piece of shit. Uh, this is not news. Clay Matthews is a piece of shit. Uh, I don't, I don't think anything different than what I mean. I expect that from him. Uh, every team, you know, every there's pieces of shits on every team. You can still like the guy as a player, but he's a piece of shit. And then because uh, he commented like saying, "Well, this is what uh, we expect this out of Bears. Bears. Yeah. But we don't expect this out of the out of Packers. We're better than this, or something like that." First oh, of all, like we, like okay. we're part of the team. First off, I. You know, I have to comment. I'm like, the Bears had some of the most respectful players in there. And, or, like, that I would love to say that could play for Denver. And Lance Briggs, Brian Urlacher, Charles Tillman. You know, just to name those guys. There's plenty others. But these are guys that are very respectable guys. Not dirty players. They play hard, but they're not dirty. Similar to how John Lynch is. He's a hard player, but he's not dirty. And, you know, these guys are, you know, like, that that. And he's like, he's like, Brian Urlacher is a piece of shit, but a great athlete. Yeah. <laughs> I I wanted to comment on that, but I'm like, I, I'm just not going to waste my time. You can't I, fix stupidity. I wrote in, I wrote in, you're just a stupid Packer cunt fan, and then decided not to send it. <laughs> That's exactly what was like my thought process. Just in a shorter, condensed version. Because if you really think that, you're just a fucking idiot. Yeah. To believe your team is that much more... Holy, holier than thou. That's the biggest issue I have with some of those fans, is they have that mentality. Especially when their quarterback turns into a whiny baby. Yeah. 
Especially was, talking about Clay Matthews. I mean, I Rodgers has always been a little bitch, but every, every quarterback's like a little bitch anyways. Like, they complain about everything. Oh, yeah, everything. they complain about everything. The only difference yeah, yeah. is, like, they talk like how... Like, they compare... Like, they always say how... They always show the videos on Cutler about him kind of having his head down or whatever it is, but they never used to show it on Rodgers. But now, since the Packers are kind of struggling, you see it all the time now. Yeah. He's always been like that. If he doesn't get his way, he pouts. The same thing with Cutler. It's every the, quarterback. The difference between Cutler and uh, Rodgers is Cutler doesn't hide it. No. He doesn't care what you think. He doesn't care about his image. Rodgers does. That's the difference between the two. That's why you don't see Ro- Cutler commercials, but you see Roger commercials. Bad ones, by the way. Terrible commercials. Yeah. You see that uh, DeAndre Hopkins responded to the Odell incident. Who cares? So, let's move on to... Uh, Kevin's corner. Uh, I, just one second. I actually want to hear that. I didn't, I didn't hear about <laughs> you didn't that. Didn't hear about this? No. It Go was ahead. like at like a practice, they had an intra squad practice, and there was a fight between him and the corner, and they were talking, but then he walked away, and then they had an interview about it. They're like, "Why didn't you do anything?" He's like, "Because we're football players. We bitch, but then we're back to the game." And then they linked the Odell fight, and the guy who did the interview was just like, "The difference between a headstrong receiver and a crybaby." I was like, "Oh." Oh, all right. Okay. All right. By the way, he's still the ugliest mug in the NFL, DeAndre Hopkins. He's got a face that only a mother could love. Yeah. Sorry, I just had to point We're not that talking out. about dudes being attractive, but that's an ugly motherfucker. This would be a perfect part for Jesse because, you know, he likes all of them. He's a huge receiver, so, I mean, of course he's going to love him. He's an indie fan. Anyways, moving on to Kevin's Corner. Thank you, host Marcus Van Barrick. <laughs> this is the part of the show where we t- go over to the certain corner of the certain corner of the world, and we try to find. I'm also in a corner, but and we try to find the right corner for the right time, and that's where we find Kevin. So, once again, we always introduce to our when Kevin's corner. Whenever life gets you down. Keeps you wearing a frown And the gravy train has left you behind And when you're all out of hope Down at the end of your rope And nobody's there to throw you a line If you ever get so low That you don't know which way to go Come on and take a walk in my shoes Never worry about a thing, got the world on a string, cause I've got the cure for all of my blues. I take a look at my enormous penis, and my troubles start to melt away. I take a look at my enormous penis, and the happy times are coming to stay. I gotta say, when I glance in my pants, I end up feeling like a sunshiny day. I take a look at my enormous penis. Saying that everything is going my way. Ah, oh, we all know what that sound is. Welcome to Kevin's Corner. Kevin, take it away. For the record, that isn't the sound of my enormous penis. Okay. So, diving right into NXT this week, which I didn't know, but they were still in London. Well, that's kind of cool. They stayed in London. Evidently, they were doing... They did, like, they did like a show every two days since TakeOver. So, that's kind of cool. So, they're probably just doing TV tapings and a couple of them there. Yeah. I mean, this is the only one that's probably going to get aired, but... They're going to go back to full sale hopefully next week and be done with it. But they start the show off with the Fatal 4-Way Tag Team match I was telling you about earlier. Between the Vaude Villains, the Hype Bros, Blake and Murphy, and Jordan and Gable. Just hearing those names, who do you think goes over? Probably Jordan and Gable, right? That would be correct. This match was awesome. Was it? It was. It was... You had... The, or you had Blake and Murphy who were like Barrett. They did nothing in the match up until Jordan Gable got tagged or Jason Jordan got tagged, 
and he suplexed everybody. Every suplex. And then there was a point where everyone was getting thrown out of the ring, and he took uh, Murphy and belly to belly him over the top rope and took everybody else out. That was good. Pretty solid. Then he hit a corner spear, and they hit their tag team finisher, and they got the pin. Was it... It was the number one contenders match? Nope, it was just a match. Oh yeah, they advertised it on uh, last week. They made the Vaude villains look really strong in this match. Just Well, I wouldn't even say that. I'd say they made Aiden English look kind of strong. Well, they match. are strong. They're literally the strongest tag team. Okay. Well, that's what their gimmick was for like 10 minutes. They said that <laughs> Simon They said that Simon Gotch could bench 1,000 pounds. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I laughed at her. I was like, no! <laughs> yeah, that'd be just downright. He wouldn't be. Royce, he wouldn't done. be there. He wouldn't be there. Yeah. He'd be in the other file. No. You know, you don't want to be David Boston and be able to, you know, have your muscles too big where you can't make a catch or anything like that. Alright. But yeah, that was the first of the three matches, and it was a great match. I wouldn't have started the show with it because it probably could have been your main event, but. Because Sami Zayn returns, that's your main event. Oh, yeah. Hooray. Yeah, so... They did a lot of, like, flashbacks just to the takeover through this. It was like, meh. Like, they showed the Asuka thing, and they showed a backstage segment from TakeOver with uh, Emma lying on the table getting checked out by the trainer, and Dana Brooks running her mouth like normal. And it turns into she's facing the wall and goes, if Asuka was here right now, Iden spins around and Asuka's there. And then she goes, oh, Dana, and taps her head. <laughs> and then turns around, Asuka disappears, she goes, tell me she left. She doesn't know what I could do to her. And I was just like, really? She kicked both your asses and you're still talking. But, yeah. So the feud continues. Yeah. It just, yeah. yeah, great, right? It's fine. But you know what's even better than that? The return of Bull Dempsey. Yes. I love Bull Dempsey. We love Bullfit. No, I just like Bull Dempsey. I like Bullfit. I think it's funny. Is he, like, still the same size? Absolutely. Comes out to the ring fat as shit in a onesie like Kurt Angle used to wear. (laughs) And does, like, workout stuff. Like, he was doing jumping jacks and, like, wall climbing stuff. It was just great. I loved it. So the story of Bull Dempsey was... He originally was, like, a brute when he came in. Like, he would just kill guys. He was this... uh, They used to call him the last of a dying breed. Which is, like, the traditional... What a wrestler's supposed to look like. Just a big guy. In trunks or whatever. Or uh, singlet or whatever they were. And he would just beat guys. And then he ran into Baron Corbin. And Baron Corbin destroyed him in, like, four matches. Kind of buried him. So then he went through this phase... And I forgot who it was, but someone told him that he was uh, overweight or something like that. And he would do, like, promos where he'd be talking, and then he would, like, pull out a Snickers bar in the middle of the conversation, like, from his trunks, and he, he would eat it. <laughs> I there think was, it was Tyler Breeze. Was it Tyler Breeze? There was a time where he was chasing a guy around the ring and stopped and pulled out some, like, Cheetos and <laughs> ate it in the middle of a match because he was hungry. <laughs> yep. It's stuff like that. So now he's running this bull fit program where he's trying to get into shape. It's just not working. He's not in shape. Got the biggest smile on his face doing his jumping jacks in the middle of the ring. Just great. I gotta check it out. I haven't seen Bull uh, Bull Dempsey in a while. So happy. I love when he comes out to the ring. Like He'll stop in the middle of the ramp and he'll point at the fans on one side and then run with the biggest smile like a little kid on Christmas and high five him. Go back to the middle and then do it to the other side. And he goes back and forth doing all the way down the ramp. But he faces the newcomer, Elias Sampson, the guy who's been playing a guitar for six weeks. In oh shadows. God, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, we tried figuring this out one time, and we're like, who could this possibly be? James Storm already debuted, so it's not Did a problem for him. Nope. <laughs> Just came out with his guitar. Did he have gear on, or was he just like uh, He had like a rocker, bro tank looking thing, and a scarf, which he didn't wrestle in, but he wore it. And then some like leather pants. It was like, he looked like he was about to play a gig in some coffee shop. Okay. And, yeah. His finisher... Did you figure out who he is yet? No, I didn't. I didn't really think about it. Damn it, Patrick. Sorry. We'll have that next week on Kevin's Corner. But, um... 
His finisher is a elbow drop off the top rope. Eh, is it a good elbow drop? Nope. Okay. It's just bad. Well, Bull Dempsey's was a flying headbutt. <laughs> Oh, All right, and you know how they have like their little nicknames for wrestlers. He's the Drifter, Elias Sampson. The Drifter, the Drifter. I'm okay with that. But yeah, then we go through some bullshit NXT takeover cuts, cuts through the Baron Corbin thing, and then Baron Corbin turns into Samoa Joe and says, "Now I deserve a number one contendership." So he's just declaring himself the number one contender. Okay. Baron Corbin, or not Baron Corbin, Apollo Crews is nowhere to be found. Yeah, he kind of got murdered in that match. He kind of dominated that match and just got hit by end of days. No, it was the opposite. When he was hitting moves, though, it it just looked like... Corbin killed him. Yeah. But then we get to the return of Sami Zayn. I like him, but, like, they really overplayed this. Did he wrestle anyone? Yeah. What did he wrestle? The perfect 10. Uh, I called that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. I said he'll probably wrestle Ty Dillinger. You said he would face Ty Dillinger (laughs) in a 28-minute match. Guess how long their match was. I didn't say 28 minutes, but what? 27 minutes. It was a long match. Why? It was yucky. And then Sami Zayn cut a promo about how he's back and he's better than ever and he just misses everybody. And he will one day again be your NXT champion. Uh, okay. And that's NXT. That was a brutal show. That was an hour I'll never get back. I'd rather watch Raw. That uh, not me. Yeah. They could have replayed the tag match three times and I would have been okay. I'd rather watch Tennessee Jacksonville and triple overtime. <laughs> That's um okay. So some wrestling news before we end Kevin's corner. Seen Cara got injured tonight against Big E. Uh, they had him wrestle still. Isn't legit. Dislocated injury? shoulder during the match. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, other wrestling news: Hernandez is going to sue Lucha Underground because they had him released from his TNA contract. Yeah. Uh, Nikki Bella is going to have neck surgery uh, due to the rack attack doing something to her neck. Okay. So she'll be gone for a while. Yep. They will know as of the 6th of January if she needs surgery or not. And then two matches announced for the January 8th live event will be Brock Lesnar versus Sheamus and Cena versus Del Rio for the United States Championship. Lesnar versus Sheamus. Ooh. I kind of like that. That's a big brute match. I hope it's good. Yeah, me too. I hope they just don't have Lesnar kill him. I want well, to see them fight. You hope? I want to see them fight. That's a big old hope because you know Lesnar's just going to kill him. Yeah, but I want to see them like beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. That's the match I want to see. I want to see those two. But yeah. So that's it for Kevin's Corner. Kind of sucked because NXT sucked. But yeah, back to you, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I'm sitting here in front of a... Now, now see, I did this to you the other night, and you said, who the fuck is Bob? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I figure that as far as Monday Night Raw, we covered that. We covered our our nice little thing, and we are we're going strong. We should make a random top ten list. I was thinking about that, but I just don't know what we could do. Um, I know we could go, like, tag teams, I guess. We want to do that. Oh, God, we're doing tag teams? We can. Oh, what are we doing, all time? Not all time, we'll say since, like... Let's month. go from, like, 99 up. Oh, 97 up. Okay. 98, 98. We'll do. I'm okay with that. We need to have we're this just planned doing, out better, Mr. Host. And we're doing... Uh, well, I didn't have anything planned for a top ten, because I kind of got... I didn't expect uh, Rob not to be here today. So, normally we go over our show before we go on there, and I kind of got uh, blindsided with it. 
and I didn't know if Marcus was going to make the show told until Marcus seven, gonna, almost seven o'clock. Told you Marcus was going to make the show. I know. He told me this week at work that he was making the show. I did. Okay. I told him, and he said, "We'll see." Which means yes, apparently. Okay. So we're going kayfabe, right? As far as tag teams, sure. Which means if wrestling wasn't scripted, we go off of uh, we go off of like. Uh, Title wins, WrestleMania, gotcha. main events, that kind of stuff. And we're going WWE exclusively. Ooh, I didn't think about that. Or are we going to include TNA? Because TNA is kind of the king of the tag teams. It's up to you. What do you want to do? Well, we'll go WWE exclusively, including teams that we, we're including their TNA career well, in it. How about we do a top five TNA after? I don't want to do TNA. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but I think it should go WWE exclusive tag teams. Okay. And if they wrestled in TNA as well as a as their group, it counts. Is because there's going to be a chunk of guys. There's some really good tag teams that left WWE and had to come back. And with that said, I think number one's the Dudley Boys because they have 20 tag team championships. I agree. Yeah, and they've been a tag team. Argue against that. They've been the tag team champions forever. Or they've been tag teaming for a long, long time. Yeah. So we all agreement with the Dudley boys? Can't yeah. really argue against that one. And does this include stables? Or groups? tag teams. Tag just teams. Tag strictly teams. tag teams. Just strictly Correct. tag teams. Okay. Who are you thinking? Well, I was thinking like DX. No, they weren't really a tag team. They were more of a group. You yeah. could say the New Age <coughs> Outlaws, because they were part of that group. Yeah. But Triple H and Shawn Michaels weren't a real tag team, unless you're including that 2007 bullshit run. I don't really include I always any consider t- that 2007 bullshit run. You're going to have to remember that. I, I don't include that as they didn't have tag teams during that time. So And we're also not putting in uh, single guys that were just put together. Okay. So no Jera show, no Miz show. No, uh, Big Show Kane. Jerry Show was super dominant, so was Big Show Kane. Right. But we're not, those guys aren't going to be included in this. Actual tag teams. Okay. Uh, n- a name I like to throw out, you got the Hardys you can think about. Always. Uh, I would go Edge and Christian over the Hardys. Uh, Hardys last a little longer, but Edge and Christian had both, they were, when they were on top, they were the best. They have more head-to-head wins over the Hardys. They won all three of the TLC matches. And they are they were seven-time tag team champions together. I mean, if wrestling... And they're, like, the only tag team that broke up and never got back together. They yeah. never went back together as Edge and Christian. I mean, if wrestling's not scripted, I would say, like, the most dominant tag team would probably be the Brothers of Destruction. That's not a tag team. They weren't a real tag team. They were too... Single guys thrown together. You're talking about Undertaker and Kane? Yeah. No. Weren't they somewhat established before they went ahead and did that too? Way They were way established. Kane debuted against The Undertaker. And then yeah. you have Undertaker who debuted in like 91. Mm-hmm. And, he had the min- a few times. and he had the Ministry of Darkness like, or he did the, uh, he did the Ministry of Darkness for a while. Okay. Like that was after he, like they were... They were a thing in like 2001 where they put them together, and then they brought them back in like 08 or something like that. They don't count. Okay. Then, yeah, I'd probably say Edge and Christian. Because that's a real tag team. They're my favorite tag team of all time. That, that, they're mine. They also have uh, successful single careers as well. And even Christian. Very kind of, successful singles careers. Well, Maybe Christian not Christian so much. No, Christian won two TNA world titles. And he won uh, the world heavyweight title twice. We agreement, Edge and Christian? Yeah. Edge and Christian. Number three. Hardys. That's my second favorite tag team. Hardy Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay with that. I have a question. Yeah. So, if we're running teams in TNA as well, can we give them credit for what they've done outside of TNA as well? Like if it's not if WWE they're a, if they're a WWE tag team, okay, then no. 
like we said, a WWE tag team, but if they left WWE and did something else, we're including that. Okay. Uh, WCW and ECW count, because that's part of WWE. Well, I was talking about the Wolves, but... They no, they never wrestled in WWE. They won't count, right? No. And I would actually put, uh, if we're talking TNA tag teams, I would probably think about uh, Beer Money. Yeah. It's probably like their top team. Beer Money and then... Uh, Mortar City Machine Guns. I love Mortar City. But like those are your those are your top teams from TNA. I, the Wolves are during a time where TNA is in their dark period. Mm-hmm. Anyways, with that said, uh, number four, and this is interesting because I've thought about it, I'm thinking about it, and I really like uh, Sean Benjamin and Charlie Haas. The as world's team, greatest tag team, or Team Angle is what they were called before. Uh, that's. That's one tag team that you can think about. They won the tag titles a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Miz and Morrison would be a tag team. I would definitely put Charlie Haas and Sheldon Benjamin above them. Yeah, I would too. Uh, not MMM, MNM. Ugh, I always screw that one up. The Acolytes is another one. They won the tag titles a bunch of times. And as far as like a, uh, a cohesive group, when those two were together in the Attitude Era, they were pretty much unbeatable. Especially when they joined the Ministry of Darkness. So that's kind of the team I'm looking towards. Because really, I look at when was tag team wrestling a thing and who were the top tag teams at the time. Uh, Tag team wrestling was more of a thing in the late 90s Mm -hmm. and up to 2001. Uh, I like the Acolytes in this spot. I would too. Uh, Bradshaw and Farouk. You can't go wrong with those two. Yeah, I agree. So we'll go to the acolytes. Plus, I think they they actually beat uh, Undertaker. No, not Undertaker. They beat Kane and X Pac. Okay. Which was a a thing back then. So we'll go Ac. Oh. Just plug Kane with somebody. He'll make him a great tag well, team. And I totally misspelled that. I don't care. Whatever. But the uh, as far as like Kane is concerned, if you're talking about like a tag team partner, like one of his, if you want to include anyone. You either got to go with Daniel Bryan with Team Hell No, which was dumb. Well, I'm not dumb, but I mean, like that wouldn't be it, the team. The, go. the thing was dumb. I would go X Pac Kane because that was actually a thing, and they were together for like a year, yeah. going for the tag titles. Uh, number f- five. <sighs> I'd like to say uh, this one's tough. Um. Uh, there's really no current team right now, you could say. Um, well, I wouldn't say current. This is where I would probably put uh, Team Angle. The world's greatest tag team? Yeah, because they own like a lot of victories over established guys. Yeah. Like they beat Eddie Guerrero and Chavo. They beat... Uh, they beat a lot of good like, they beat singles Benoit. together. They put Benoit and Angle together and they beat them. Yeah. That's a fun... I love that. That's a great tag team. So... It's just adding... One, two, and three had an insane like tag team rivalry in O one, O two. He knows. Yeah. Just great. Loved it. Yeah. Maybe for the people listening didn't know. Oh. Yeah, everyone knows about the Hardys, the Dudleys and the and Edge and Christian. That tag team. T L C. Right. They're the originators. They did it three times. I just love the whole gimmicks between them. I thought it was great. Uh, let's see who else we got left. Uh, Legion of Doom. They were kind of, they kind of were fizzled out before this time. Yeah, but I think you probably, I think we should incorporate them because they were still kind of a thing in '98. They just kind of fizzled out, and they had they were Legion of Doom, and then they changed their name. They were what was what was their team in WCW? Because WWE bought them. But they were Legion of Doom here, and then they were something else there. You don't know. That's okay. We'll go Legion of Doom at six. And then seven. What? I'm just trying to think of, like, even a current tag team. that. only current tag team you could think about is the Usos at this point, with the credibility they got. Yeah. They were tag champs for a while. They're like the John Cena of the tag division for quite a while there. Uh, 
I know they might not make the list, and I know they might not count, but what about Paul London and Brian Kendrick? Again. They were thrown together, but they were a decent team. No, no, they're, they're a legit tag team. I don't know. I didn't see a whole lot of them because they were on SmackDown. Yeah. And I wasn't really watching wrestling during that time. They were a decent tag team. They had the SmackDown Tag Team Championships for a little bit. Right. But, I mean, if they'd be on the list, they'd probably be at like 9 or 10. Also, most of these, outside of Legion of Doom, because they were actually just, and the Dudleys, there was at least a guy in this group that had a very successful or somewhat successful singles career. You got the Dudley boys with Bully Ray. Bully Ray went on his big run in TNA. Edge and Christian, obviously both of them. The Hardys, both of them. Both of them. Uh, the Acolytes, definitely Bradshaw yeah. as, as JBL. Maybe not Farouk. Well, Farouk before he was Farouk. Before when he was, was when he was Ron Simmons. He's the first, I think the first African-American world champion in right. WCW that history. Right, that's correct. Uh, world's greatest tag team, Shelton Benjamin, had a fairly successful singles career. Uh, Charlie Haas did not. And then Legion of Doom was just together the whole time. Yeah, man, they really, I mean, I don't know if... That's a ball drop on Haas, but man, Shelton was up and Haas just was gone. Right. They do that. They usually pick a guy and then bury the other guy. Yeah. Like Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. <laughs> that's, that's the name. Those are the two that I always get uh, compared to. Is when they put when they compare those two together because they were like the Rockers or something like that. Yeah, Rockers. And yeah. they were a great tag team and then they split them up. Uh, I'm not real familiar with early 90s wrestling, so as far as like uh, like the stuff that happens before that, I'm not 100% right. sure. I just know by what I've heard. I've never seen any rocker matches because okay. I just can't stand watching that time of period. That time of wrestling is kind of like what it is now. And if I want to watch like what's going on back then, I'll just watch now because it's the same shit. Right. Are we considering the Hearts a stable or a tag team? The Hart Dynasty, you talking yeah. about? It was just a tag team with Tyson Kidd and... Uh, or even just Brett and Owen. No, we they weren't They, they weren't a tag, they weren't okay. really a tag team, and that was 97. Okay, then if we're going to go with number 7, I'd probably say the New Age Outlaws. Yeah. Yeah. They were like tag champs a lot in the Attitude Era. Yeah. And they beat Rock and Sock. <laughs> you act like it's an accomplishment. It is. They beat them for the tag titles. That's Mick Foley and The Rock. Yeah. That's an accomplishment. But at that point, though, it seemed so more what? like a gimmick than anything. Mean Street Posse at 8. You guys don't even know who those are. Who guys the are. fuck? Yeah, I was like, what? You don't remember the Mean Street Posse? Okay, all right, if I saw okay, a picture so of it, probably. That? Attitude Era. Uh, Shane McMahon's buddies. When Shane was a heel, he had... Three guys that were like his bodyguards, and they wore sweater vests. Do you oh, remember these guys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. They come out to the Main Street Posse, and they they were ridiculous. And Who they were these guys. Uh, Joey Abs. Uh, that was one of the names. He was kind of a fat fuck. Uh, they had uh, Rodney, and then uh, I can't remember the other guy's name, but they were. They were jobbers. They were tag team jobbers. Pat Patterson and Gary Briscoe beat them numerous times on Raw. What? Do you know who Pat Patterson and Gary Briscoe is? Yeah. Okay. It's just the fact that he had a bunch of guys in sweater vests go out there. And it was pretty fun. Must have been the inspiration for Matt Stryker. Now, what about... What about... Because, uh, see... Prince Albert had a couple of guys he tagged with. Are we talking about TNA now? No, Albert. Okay. Prince, I don't talk about TNA. Like, I don't understand. I told you. I Say this again. It's the third time now. I'm talking about that. the tag team, not the brand. There was a Prince Albert in TNA? Tyson Albert? I was saying... Oh, T and... Yeah. You had... Sorry, I thought you were talking about TNA. Sorry, not T and... Or T and, and A... a. I was I was very confused for a second. But now I figured it out. Well, you said Albert, so I'm like, what about TNA? And then Sorry. you automatically jumped on my throat about the brand. <laughs> you said, are we talking about TNA? I thought you were talking Nothing. about... Normally, I would have I worded it differently. Are we talking about the group TNA? And I would have been like, oh, yeah. 
Tess, Albert, and Trish. That was like the stable. Oh, okay. Uh, Trish Stratus's boys. Remember Test? Get them, yeah. boys. Remember Albert? You know who Albert oh, yeah, is. I know He's Albert Tensai. Is. But uh, he had a couple of different guys. He also had Draws. Do you remember Draws? Nope. He's paralyzed now. Okay. Uh, I forgot. I think D'Lo Brown wrecked his career. Uh, for the for the three of you listening, uh, look that up for me because I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> or correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was D'Lo Brown. Uh, he's paralyzed from the neck down. He got paralyzed in some match in like 98. Uh, that was Albert's first tag partner. But I think his biggest tag partner was Test. Yeah. Now, would you consider that a tag team? Or would you consider that two singles guys put together? Uh, it's a tag team with a female leader. Because uh, Test was in a huge storyline before TNA. That's correct. With Stephanie McMahon and the marriage. Yeah, the marriage, know, right. And he was also part of a group called The Union, which was uh, Mankind, The Big Show, <coughs> and Man- Mankind, The Big Show, Test, and Ken Shamrock. Did you want to call him the man-child right there? No. Did you want to call him that? <laughs> no, because you said man and you said ch- I was like, are you going for man child here? No, I was trying to think who the other member was. I was going to say test. So, I don't know. Would you consider that kind of a tag team? Or would they be excluded from the list? I think they'd be excluded from the list just because of how much... Because they never they got had... back together and they never were at record. Like, okay. I, yeah, I, I agree. The only reason I would say them together is because they beat the uh, Acolytes and they actually took over their office. Oh, okay. Which was kind of a big thing back then. Hardcore and Crash, huh? You don't even know who they are. Hardcore and Crash Holly. Yeah. Yeah, I know who okay. they are. Okay. Fucking no. <laughs> You're giving me that look like I finger banged your cat. <laughs> I, I don't love know. that like, line. Well, I love that line. <laughs> Shut up, Marcus. <laughs> don't encourage him. Uh... Um, Marcus, throw out a team here. See, I'm not good with the uh, teams, really. I would really jump usually... to TNA to throw teams out, though. Because I would throw out, like, Homicide and Hernandez. Okay, well, they're a T and they're a T and a team. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, I didn't really pay too much attention to the tag teams because... Stop moving around. <laughs> Jesus. That hurts so bad. What'd you do? Kick the table. <laughs> That's going to be picked up on the mic. Um, because of the fact that for a long time it wasn't really relevant. So I just kind of forgotten about a lot of them. But I want to say, you know, uh, even though it's, it probably won't be uh, considered a tag team, but the Chris, the Chris Benoit and the Angle, because they were already established prior to. No, Angle came in as a singles competitor. Benoit actually came in with the Radicals. Yeah. Really? With uh, Eddie Guerrero, Dean, Dean Malenko, and Perry Satter. Never heard of Dean Malenko. Really? Yeah. Old school wrestler. He didn't last in WWE really long. Remember when Perry Saturn was like a vegetable and he was talking to the mop? Yeah. Um, what about 8 Ball and, eight ball and Skull? For you, uh, older, I don't know that one. you older wrestling fans, you're gonna be like, "Wow, that that's a name drop." <laughs> so when I first started watching wrestling, what was uh, this? Ninety-eight. You need to stop moving around. I'm gonna put you through the damn table. <laughs> Bring it, pinfall. So I got back up. Don't I'm make pretty, me KO your I'm ass. Pretty sure the both of us could put you through this table. <sighs> no. Pretty easily. He's pretty putting easily. both of us through the table. Let's get real. No, he's not. That's his gimmick. It's it's the uh, it is the. There's a reason why I didn't get choke slammed in that match. You're gonna be the champ, aren't you? This cheating. How do you think I won the championship? This isn't fair. So paid off. So, anyways, let's get back to the conversation. Uh, I'm not even gonna finish that one. So let's move on. Give me something here. You you threw out Paul London and Brian Kendrick. I'm still going to throw out Paul London and Brian Kendrick. I can't argue it. I, I love Brian think. Kendrick. What about the uh, Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch? <laughs> it was a joke. That's not a bad joke, though. 
they were kind of a thing for they a few have... months. <laughs> <laughs> they were tag champs for almost all of those few months. Yeah, but... One yeah. title reign and they're they're done. They're gone. Two, two, two. So they lost. They got. I like I like La Resistance. La Resistance. Renee Young and uh, Renee Young and, and what Rob Rico. Conway. Rico. Oh, I thought Rob was, Conway. Yeah, Rob Conway. Rob and Conway. Renee Dupree. That's a name drop. Renee Dupree <laughs> with Miss Jackie as their female. Yikes. Yeah. Lucha I'm... Dragons. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, the Ascension? Just kidding. Yeah, Stop no. talking. <laughs> <laughs> I like Paul London, Brian Kendrick. I'm fine with it. I can't think of anything else. Paul London. And then you can actually go a lot of resistance. They had the titles for a while. No, so. we're not doing that. It was a joke. I like them. You can go Usos later on, probably like 10. Just because they're there. I'm oh, yeah. I'm okay with putting them at nine because they okay. had a long run and they're still going. Yeah, and then ten. Uh, New day doesn't count. Nope. Well, you could count nope. them. Nope. You can, but they're not. Uh, I wish. Nope. Why? Kofi's an established single star. Barely, first. barely. Still established. He wasn't really established. Same establishment. He was Sheldon. a jobber. He was a jobber. Intercontinental champion. He was a jobber. Didn't he jobbed up. against any main eventer. Yeah. yeah, he was a joke. Whenever it came to anything and that Xavier was... Xavier Woods was like never a thing. And never then heard of him with, until the new day. tag with Truth? And Big E was in a, a couple of other tag teams. Yeah. And then he had like a little intercontinental run and then became a complete jobber. Tag teams jobber. are he was the bodyguard for people. Right. Like... Uh... Chavo Guerrero and I want to say Chavo Guerrero and or Kerwin White and his caddy Dolph Ziggler. Who's Kerwin White? Chavo Guerrero when he became white. He he lost a bunch of uh, Mexican matches. Wow, he lost a bunch of matches and no longer wanted to be Mexican, so he wanted to be white. So he came out in a golf cart, and he wore, like, a golf suit and everything, and he had a caddy. Would hand him a golf club. It was the greatest thing ever. It only lasted two weeks because Eddie died, so he had to go back to being Chavo. Oh, okay. I was, like, I put him in there just for that. <laughs> no, it was just for that gimmick. It was never really a thing. What about Batista and uh, Devon Dudley? What? You don't remember that tag team? Batista and Devon. Yeah, when he was Reverend Devon, his altar boy was Batista. <laughs> okay. Well, Rey Mysterio and Batista would have more credit than that. <laughs> Rob Van Dam and Kane? Seems like Kane has a lot yeah. of tag team Kane. partners. Can we just put Kane and the roster? <laughs> yeah, Kane and, and the roster. Kane. We'll just put Kane. <laughs> Kane. He's that damn good. Kane and, and we'll just leave it blank. Kane and whoever he was with because he was always relevant with whatever who he was with. He was with Rob Van Dam, he was with your boy The Undertaker, he was with the X Pac. The X Pac. The, the X Pac. The There's only one. So. <laughs> the X Pac. He was with uh, Daniel, Daniel Bryan, Bryan. Big Show. He was with Big Show twice on two separate occasions. Dude. As corporate, as corporate Big Show, he was with them. They're 11 and 2 as a tag team. <laughs> we went over this last week. <laughs> Big Show and Kane, eleven and two as tag team. Wow! Yeah, that's that's surprising. Yeah, he was with a lot of guys. For those two having the top, uh, those two are in the top three for most pay per view losses since like oh five. Really? Yeah. That, that actually makes sense. Kane's number one. Yeah, but together they're bit... eleven and two in pay per views, right? Eleven and two in pay per views, but. Separate, they are one and two in most losses. <laughs> Put them back together. Put them back together. Get the band be... together. Yeah. yeah. Let's just not do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go over the list. So we got number 10, Kane and whoever. Uh, the, I think Kane should actually be higher. Uh, nine, <laughs> nine, the Kane. Usos. Eight, London and Kendrick. Seven, the New Age Outlaws. Six, Legion of Doom. Five, the World's Greatest Tag Team. Four, the Acolyte. 
Because I totally <laughs> spelled the Acolyte. It looks like you're trying to spell a beer. <laughs> Acolyte. Acolyte. <laughs> Acolyte. Three, the Hardy Boys. Two, Edge and Christian. And then one, the Dudley Boys. I'm sure we're missing like a hundred tag teams. I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he just starts opening no, it up. No, we're done. We're not. We're done with the list. So with that, I think that concludes this this edition of the Pinfall Wrap Up. Uh, kind of a shorter edition of the Pinfall Wrap Up. Well, time. yeah, we didn't have two pay per views to fucking cover in one show. I am your host Andrew Karachi, alongside Marks Van Buren and Justin Knapp. And uh, we're going to conclude with another Retar Crew song, because that's kind of our new thing. They haven't sued us yet, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> How could they? They give their shit out free. I know, that's why <laughs> That's why if I ever get in trouble from YouTube, I'll be like, their shit's free. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't even care. Own their rights. They don't care. But, you know, it's them. They're freaking useless people. And what Retar Crew should, song should we do this time? Well, I have the same vote every week, so... Uh, no, we're not doing that one. It doesn't make sense. I know. Uh, we'll do something. We'll, uh... Do we do birth control yet? I think we did birth control last week. No, no. no. What was last week? Return of the Retar. Oh. Yeah, I don't think we, we have did. not done no, birth control. I was going to say, do the one where we're all naked in the YouTube video. <laughs> do you want the, you want the video on, too? Yeah, please. Okay, we'll I would enjoy it. We will bring up the video. Have you seen it yet? It's actually hilarious. I love it. I Not the it. men together, the song. I totally spelled birth wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. And here we go, retard crew. Birth control. You can find the Retar Crew at retarcrew.com. All their music is for free on there. Uh, they also have a Twitter. Follow them at Retar Crew. 
And uh, before we uh, kick things off, Marcus, what do you think of the retard crew? Oh, they're absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Absolutely hilarious. The videos are the best things about them. The thing I really like about them is they can take, like, they're actually pretty good songwriters, too, as far as the way they rhythm and rhyme and stuff and how they can get a clever chorus together, and it's always something it's something goofy as how they are. They're, they're actually really good, and I think that's what the whole parody of what they are. It's, it's like, ingenious when you think about it. These are, like, four fairly intelligent people. Like, when you, like the whole uh, meta song, which is probably something we'll play next week. But, but, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to add. Justin? It's totally meta. <laughs> it's so <laughs> meta! Anyways, uh, that is it for us. Tune back in next week.